This lecture is part of an online Galois theory course and will be about primitive elements. So what is a primitive element? Well, suppose we've got a finite extension of fields. Then M is generated by a finite number of elements, so it's equal to K alpha 1, alpha 2, up to alpha N for some alpha I. And we've seen we can do a lot of arguments by induction because we first prove something for k and then we prove it for k alpha 1 and then we prove it for k alpha 1 alpha 2 and so on. And this works but it's a bit messy and tiresome and, and it would really be much neater if m was generated by just one element of, of, k, of m. So we can ask is m equal to k alpha for some alpha? And if so, alpha is called a primitive element. So um, I don't know why they use the term primitive element. A more sensible thing would be to call it a generator, but anyway, that's the terminology. Um, so, and the answer is yes, if the extension m over k is separable. And sometimes no, if not. So what we're going to do is we're going to prove that there's a primitive element whenever the extension is separable and then give an example to show it fails in general. Um, so we first observe that, that if m over k is separable and um, finite, we're assuming that all extensions are finite for the moment, then there are only a finite number of um, intermediate extensions between um, L and M. And this follows fairly easily because what we do is we just extend M to a larger normal extension of k. Let's say normal and separable. So um, we, we could, for example, just take the irreducible polynomials defining a set of generators of m and n could be their splitting field. And then we look at the Galois group, which is the Galois group of n over k, and this is finite of course. And now we notice that um, subgroups of g correspond to extensions between k and um, n. And of course g is finite, So it has only a finite number of subgroups, so there are only a finite number of extensions between k and n. And then of course there are only a finite number between k and m because m is contained in n. Um, and now the idea is we want to choose alpha not in any extension L with K contained in L contained in M and L not equal to M of course because if it's not in any of these finite number of extensions then the field it generates can't be any of the proper sub extensions so it must be the whole of M. Well all we've got to do is to prove that M is not the union of all these extensions and this usually follows easily from the following lemma. Suppose k is an infinite field and m a finite dimensional vector space. Then m is not the union of a finite number of proper subspaces. So proper means they're not equal to m. 
And um, we can prove this by induction on the number of subspaces. So if we've got subspaces V1 up to Vk, what we do is we sort of draw V1, V2 up to Vk minus 1, and then let's draw Vk in a different colour. And what we do is we find an element not in V1 up to Vk minus 1. And we don't have to assume it's in Vk, but if it's not in Vk, we're done, so we may as well assume that. And then we pick, um, we know Vk is not the whole of V, so we pick some element not in Vk. And as before, um, uh, we're finished unless it's in one of these Vi's, although we don't really have to assume that. And then what we do is we draw the line through these two points. Oops, I seem to have missed that point, so let me make this point a bit bigger. Um, and we notice this line is not contained in any Vi, so it has at most one point in common with any of these subspaces V1 up to Vk. Well, it's got an infinite number of points on it because our field is infinite, so it must have an infinite number of points not in any Vk. So, so, so the line contains points not in any Vi. So, um, so in, over infinite fields, a vector space can't be the union of a finite number of proper subspaces. And of course, this immediately implies that if k is infinite, oops, and if the extension m over k is separable, this means m is equal to k of alpha for some alpha. Because that we've shown there are only a finite number of intermediate extensions, because the field extension is separable, and their union can't be m because k is infinite. Well, fine. Uh, what if k is finite? So it's a finite field. Well, there are several ways of doing this. Um, one is to show that, that, that we look at the multiplicative group of m. And this is a cyclic group so any generator of this cyclic group generates the field M. I mean, it generates the multiplicative group of M under multiplication, so it certainly generates the whole field um, and is primitive. So the only thing we need to recall is, is why is this cyclic? Well, the reason why this is cyclic is that any finite subgroup of um, M star for any field M is cyclic. This is really nothing to do with M being finite. And the reason for this is that if we call this finite subgroup G, G has at most N solutions to g to the n equals 1. And that's because these are just the roots of an nth degree polynomial, and there are at most n roots of that polynomial because we're working over a field. And this condition here for a finite abelian group implies g is cyclic. Um, and there are several ways of proving that. Um, there's a sort of quick and dirty one, which is just to quote the fact that any finite abelian group is a product of cyclic groups, and then you can check that if this product is not cyclic, it has more than p elements of order p for some prime p. So there, there, there are several ways of doing that. So this is a this proof is a little bit strange because the proof of the existence of a primitive element for finite fields k is quite different from the proof of the existence for infinite fields k. I don't really know of a neat proof that works for both finite and infinite fields. 
Um, so let's just have a quick example. Suppose, for example, we have K contained in, well, the simplest example of a field um, with more than one generator is we might just take K, the field over K generated by, say, the square root of 2 and the square root of 3. And then we know the subfields from Galois theory are k, k root 2, k root 3, and k root 6. And of course the whole field m itself. So all we need to do to find a primitive element is to find an element not in any of these fields here. So if we look at a plus b root 2 plus c root 3 plus d root 6, well, in order for it not to be in any of these three subfields, we must have at least two of B, C, D are um, non-zero. Sorry, when, when I said K here, I should have said this should be the rational numbers. And these are all the rational numbers. So if at least two of B, C and D are non-zero, then this element is primitive. Um, well, uh, so far we've shown that separable finite extensions all have primitive elements. What about inseparable se extensions? And the basic rule of inseparable extensions is they're counterexamples to almost everything. Um, well, if we have an inseparable extension of degree p, for p the characteristic, um, that's certainly generated by one element because the only subfields are going to be k and m. So the de degree had better be at least p squared. Um, so let's take a field of k of characteristic p greater than zero and we're going to look at the field um, generated by rational functions of two variables t and u. And inside this we can find a field, um, it's also a field of rational functions and two variables where big T is t to the u and, sorry, t to the p and big U is u to the p. And now we notice, uh, so, so this field is big K and this field is big M. And now we notice that if A is an M a to the p is in, is in k. And that's because we've got the Frobenius mapping by a equals a to the p. Um, this is a homomorphism of fields and it maps m into k because it maps a set of generators of m into k and since it's a homomorphism it must map the whole of m into k. So, if A is an M, A is a root of x to the p minus b equals naught for b in k. So it generates a field of degree p. However, um, we notice that this extension has degree p squared because both t and t has degree p over, over the field and then u adds an additional factor of p. So, so there are no primitive elements. Um, we also notice that um, the extension k t u contained in k t u is finite degree p squared but has an infinite number of sub extensions. So you remember for separable extensions we proved there are only a, a finite number of intermediate extensions. We see from this that this is not actually true for all field extensions. OK, in the next few lectures we're going to be discussing um, fields with cyclic Galois group and fields generated by taking a root of some element. 
and this will lead to the, the famous um, theorem that, that, that you can solve um, polynomials by radicals if the polynomial has degree at most four, but not in general if it has degree five or more.